Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon. I'm the founder of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna to talk about a very common question that comes up all the time. And that is, can I get a facelift and still look like myself? And you say, what? why would somebody ask that question? You probably know why. Because we look around and we see people that we've known, we see celebrities suddenly come out of a facelift, recovered, and no longer look like themselves anymore. They look different. They look like they've had a facelift. They look altered in some important way. In some ways, they don't even look human anymore, somewhat unnatural. And this creates a lot of anxiety and it creates a lot of uh, emotional turmoil because on one hand, we don't like the fact that our face is aging and we no longer look as young as we feel. And we wanna do something about it. We wanna actively participate in a process that can reverse the aging process and tie our external image with our internal vision of ourselves together. That's the ideal, right? But unfortunately, far too often, we see people that have gone through this and no longer look like this, and that puts in a lot of concern, naturally, because I've always said I would take normal natural aging any day of the week over looking like you've had work done or looking unnatural or looking different. And the timeliness of this particular video is just based on the most recent uh, press that has come out on one of our very dear celebrities, Gwen Stefani, who has just undergone some type of facial procedure, and I'm not even gonna begin to try to guess exactly what has been done, just images of her have surfaced, and as these things go, people bring my attention to them and ask me what I think about this, or what has been done, or more importantly, see, this is what I'm talking about. And when you look at Gwen Stefani, for example, before, she's a beautiful, beautiful woman, but she definitely looks somehow different um, in an obvious way, and whether this is these photos were taken during some type of healing process, or whether she's uh, this is actually her result. Again, I'm not going to speculate about that. That's not what this is about. But what it is about is to try to identify why somebody would look different after a plastic surgical procedure, what you can do to keep yourself from being one of those that completely strips your identity and your spirit away and look different as a result of it, and what are the things you should be looking for when selecting a surgeon and selecting a procedure and try to really understand how you can keep yourself in a position where you can get what you want, which is to look really youthful, like your younger self, the image that you have in your mind's eye, and not take unnecessary risks of coming out of this thing looking different. And I'll tell you why. Not only is it hard for you as an individual to take the fact that your face has been altered and different, but for all of those people around you, husbands, wives, children, friends. The biggest, biggest obstacle that people have in general when it comes to deciding to go forward with these type of things is the pushback they get by their immediate support system, their family and friends, because far too often they have seen people look messed up. Now, having said that, in the same crowded restaurant that you walk into and immediately you can pick apart the people who've had a facelift, in that same restaurant, there could be equal number of people who've had a facelift done and completely look natural and normal and you would never know they've had work done. In fact, that has been the foundation of my entire practice. The whole reason why over after nearly 20 years, my practice has such high demand and why we have grown so much is because the outcomes that I produce create a very normal, natural look and no one looks different as a result of the procedures. And people naturally will flock to that type of a, uh, a service and want to have that type of an outcome for themselves because it feels safe and they feel secure that that's gonna be the change that they're gonna get, just a younger version, a rewind of the aging process. But let's kind of get into it a little bit and start to really understand why those changes happen in a negative way. And then we'll talk about things you can look for. So, big part of the reason why this happens, and it makes perfect sense when you hear it, is that an individual has features, has proportions that are basically consistent with the population norm. And what I mean by that is that our cheeks have a certain height, our jaws have a certain shape, 
Our eyes have a certain shape. Every aspect of our face has a norm that if you look across the entire global population, it naturally fits within that norm. Again, now let's take away trauma, let's take away disease, let's take away things that might skew things in an opposite direction. The only other thing, the only unnatural thing that can take you away from this population norm, which is what natural is, is plastic surgery. And what happens is you go in for a procedure in the days when elevated cheekbones and cheek implants were very, very popular. What would happen is people would go in and all of a sudden their cheeks would be huge. Like cheekbones that, that didn't, not, you know, they've never had before that doesn't normally exist. There'd just be these massive cheekbones. It was a very odd look, but it was kind of the aesthetic trend. Just like today, we have aesthetic trends like big lips and BBLs for butt augmentation and you know these, all these different things. There's certain trends that happen. And when a trend changes the norm, it starts to become visibly unnatural looking. Other trends that we've seen in, I think it was the 80s, there's the buckle fat removals where everyone wanted this model looking, they were high cheekbones, so you put cheek implants in, and then you scoop out the buckle fat pad so everyone gets super gaunt in the center. Well, again, maybe once in a while in these out, sort of outlying faces, do you see that type of thing? But generally speaking, you don't. So we create these things surgically, sometimes with an aesthetic purpose, we're trying to create this change. Sometimes these changes happen without any desire to create them, both by the patient, sometimes by the doctor. And when that happens, it comes down to the fact that this particular surgeon that was per performing the procedures didn't keep in mind that the facial balance and proportion that needed to be maintained in this particular face had to be done or else the person is gonna look weird and unnatural. And what I mean by that is technique is a huge part of it. So for example, the traditional facelift creates more unnatural looking outcomes for a very simple principled reason. One is it pulls the face sideways. When you pull a face sideways, you put the face in a position that had never existed before. Suddenly, all of a sudden, you have a face that has become flattened and stretched looking. That's the telltale sign of somebody who's had a facelift done, is that their face looks kind of flattened and tight. Another scenario happens for a poorly performed procedure. For example, if we understand that the deep fascia of the face is what's aging, and all we do is tighten up the skin around it, which is a very common procedure actually, the fascia underneath ends up looking wavy underneath a tight skin envelope. You know, it almost looks like curtains, you know, across the face, accordion-like changes, and that's a very telltale sign when you're not treating the fascia. So there's a technique aspect, there's a concept aspect, there's also an artistic aspect to it. When a surgeon operates on a face, they have to understand what natural proportions look and feel like. So when they're performing these procedures, you go a little bit too much, even a few millimeters, you're gonna create a change that doesn't look right. Sometimes you, you underdo something in one area and overdo it in another area, then all of a sudden there's a change there. So art, artistry is an important part of it. So you've got artistry, you've got technique, you have experience. Experience is another very important aspect of it because obviously the more you do of a procedure, the better and better you're going to get at that procedure and less likely you are to go down these, these roads and misadventures. And the way you as a consumer can tell exa exactly what you're about to get yourself into is simply look at the before and afters. Think about it. What other thing in our surgical world can you visibly see what somebody looks like as a result of the handiwork of a particular surgeon? You have before and afters. Use those before and afters, look at plenty of them to get a sense of the range and consistency of the outcome. Because range and consistency is very important. What I mean by that is, it is not uncommon at all for anyone to hit a home run from time to time, right? But can you hit a home run time and time again without exception? That's where you need to basically look at lots of before and afters to understand that this surgeon is capable of creating that consistent result and they don't just do great work sometimes, not so great work other times, work that you're, you, know, you certainly wouldn't want to be a part of other times, and that's where it happens. So, that's, those are the three things that I, I would say. Again, to reiterate, you want to make sure technique is good, and I'm gonna talk about what techniques I think are good uh, philosophically. Also, you wanna make sure that the um, surgeon has experience and that they have artistry. 
all of that can be categorized as a evidence of before and afters and the experience is obviously years in practice, how many of these procedures the surgeon performs, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's talk about specifically technique. So I alluded to the fact that a sideways pull of a facelift is going to almost invariably create an unnatural look to a person, right? We talked about implants and volume changes in unnatural ways is going to create that. So what you have to do as a consumer is basically recognize that extremes are never good, changes in natural shape are never good, and what you want to do is you want to look for a surgeon that's gonna produce an outcome for you that is simply a rewinding of the aging process. And the way I always think about it very simply is this. Aging changes the face in certain predictable ways. For example, on the upper eyelids, you get a little bit of extra skin. On the lower eyelids, you either get a combination of extra skin and puffiness, or you just get extra skin or just puffiness. The upper lip, in about 50% of the time, is gonna get too long. The entire facial fascia starts to get longer. So that means the corners of the brow starts to sag, the mid face starts to sag, the jawline starts to sag, the neck starts to sag. All of that is creating shape change. In addition, the facial volume begins to diminish so your face starts to deflate a little bit. Deflation causes dark circles under the eyes, the temples above the eyes, around the mouth, the lips, all these areas, the fat pads beneath them start to diminish and the face starts to deflate. And then finally, there's changes that are happening to the surface of the skin, and that's you know dullness, fine lines and wrinkles, discoloration, loss of collagen, loss of elasticity, crepiness. So you have skin, you have volume, and you have sagging. And all three of those areas are changing simultaneously. If you wanna look the way you did, say, when you were in your 30s or 40s or you know, even younger, what you have to think about is, what did I actually look like back then? And this is what you look like. You had much better skin, you had better volume, and you had a facial shape that was consistent with a young person, which is basically a smooth jawline, no laxity in the neck, a mid face is up, lateral brows it up, eyelids that don't have a ton of extra skin, lip that is within a certain distance, 13 to 15 millimeters generally. So when I evaluate a face, I think you know all those areas deserve attention. Skin deserves attention, volume deserves attention, all the areas that are sagging deserve attention. So I pr produce a comprehensive plan or approach to address these changes. But here's the other thing. Now this is coming to the concept of what to look for and what to, to go after. I strongly believe a vertically oriented lift, this is what you probably do in the mirror, you go up and down with your, with your um, hands when you go up and that's what creates a very natural look for you. That's the kind of lift that you need. So a vertically oriented lift in my opinion is, is a foundation of a natural looking outcome. Second, is you want the entire face to be addressed simultaneously. So it doesn't help if you just bring the cheeks up, don't address the neck, or you know, don't address the outer brow, and all of a sudden everything looks kind of off, off uh, beat with each other. You want it to have harmony. So bringing everything up is basically what, in, in my practice, the Vertical Restore does. Then the upper lids and the lower lids, we talk about this in other videos, and in fact, we talk about the Vertical Restore in other videos as well, but what you're doing with the eyes are you're basically simply reversing the aging changes, taking away the extra skin from the upper eyelids, taking away the extra skin and fat from the lower eyelids, if, depending on what's involved, doing a little lip lift to shorten that distance, that brings everything to a shorter, more youthful shape, and that's because aging is elongation, anti-aging is shortening. Then we're looking at facial volume. We want to replace some of that volume. You don't want to overfill the face because that's not how you looked when you were in your 30s. You just want some of the volume that you've lost to go back. So it's a simple rewind. It's a simple taking, retracing the steps backwards, putting a little bit of volume in. I personally use fat transfer. That's what I believe is uh, the most natural looking. It's permanent, etc. But again, that's a difficult procedure to perform and not too many surgeons do it. But that to me is the best best way. Now, if you don't have fat transfer at your disposal, you would use fillers to some degree to do the same sort of thing, but not to put a ton in your cheek and create unnatural proportions and shape to the face. And finally, the skin. You know, the skin is very important. You got to remember that part of the skin aging is the laxity aspect. So that, you know, the crepiness and, and the lines and crowds around the mouth, and those type of things has to be surgically put back into position, but the quality of the skin needs to be addressed directly, and that's where good skin care routines like um, sun protection, being on good skin care, uh, daily skin care uh, products like the trifecta, for example, and retinol and vitamin C, which is actually all part of the trifecta, but using something that's very anti-aging that's gonna improve the skin on a daily basis is key. 
And then when you put all this stuff together and you're thinking I'm just taking a direct step backwards and I'm not adding anything in an unusual places, I'm not putting a vector in a different location, I'm just putting the pieces of the puzzle back to, you're gonna look natural. You're gonna look normal, you're gonna look youthful. And you know, honestly, I mean, this is a topic that I speak at a lot of our conferences about is basically just this, is how to achieve a natural looking result. And to me, it comes down to technique, vertical orientation, not taking too much from the eyes, not changing the shape of the eyes, replacing volume, being comprehensive, and, uh, and ultimately um, addressing every aspect at the same time. Because the other component is of on a natural looking faces, and this, I want you to really think about this, is if you're, let's just say hypothetically, you know, late 50s, early 60s, and you've got all the things that I just mentioned going on, and you address only one thing, you just, let's just say you do your eyes, or you just do like a facelift, which is to kind of pull things sideways. If you just do one thing and you leave everything else aged, then you've got a combination of young looking features and old looking features all in the same face, and guess what, that isn't natural. That looks weird. In a minute, somebody will be able to, you know, tell that something is off in your face. And that's what, you know, we don't always understand and, and, um, and we don't quite uh, respect is the comprehensiveness of the outcome of the, of the planned procedure is actually equally as important as the technique that's performed. And the technique is also dependent on the aptitude, talent, artistry of the surgeon to execute that technique in the proper way. So you put all of that together and you have harmony, natural, beautiful looking outcomes. So to finalize this, this, uh, this, this story here, number one, it is 100% possible to have your cake and eat it too, to look natural and look like yourself and to look younger. 100% possible. We do it every day, day in and day out, we do it. So we know it's doable. What you as a consumer need to do is seek out surgeons that can deliver those type of outcomes because that's what you want. You can get it, just understand that you have to look. And the reason why celebrities and, and different folks um, don't always get it right is because they don't apply exactly what we just talked about here. And just being a celebrity or just having a lot of money doesn't mean that you will always do the homework, know what to look for, know what to think about, know what to ask, and uh, to ultimately get exactly what we're talking about here. So folks, I hope this helps. This is actually I think a very, very important foundational video. I hope you plan to share it with some friends and family and get them um, in the know on this and keep them out of trouble. Also, um, if you like it, hit like because that's gonna help uh, get this in front of more and more people. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel because two to three times a week you're gonna get stuff like this. And you know, I'm here for you. I wanna get good information out there for you so that you guys can make good decisions, be empowered, and ultimately look as young as you feel. All right, folks, any questions, drop them in the comments below. Until next time, Dr. Amir Karam.